Hello and welcome to the very first Facebook Live done by LKW Family Mediation. My name is Louisa Whitney and I am the founder of LKW Family Mediation. I was a family solicitor for a number of years before qualifying as a family mediator and I loved mediation so much that five years ago I set up my own mediation practice to help couples who separated to deal with matters in a constructive and dignified and amicable way. So this is our first Facebook Live and what I'm going to be doing going forwards is to be publishing a blog post every Friday and then doing a Facebook Live about it so that I can expand on that um, blog post and also so that it gives people the opportunity to ask questions and to get me to expand more on points that I've written in the blog. So I really hope that this is going to work well. Today we're talking about life after separation and to me that conjures up two things. One is the short term of what the hell do you do when you have either just physically separated from a partner or a spouse or you have taken the decision to separate or sometimes that decision has been thrust upon you and the kind of immediate aftermath of that in the weeks and months after that and then there's more kind of long-term aspects as well so if I start talking about the short-term aspects um, then there's kind of three things really that I wanted to say about that and when I talk about the immediate aftermath of a separation I am really aware of how how hideous and awful it can be and that you can feel and there can also be a feeling that you're never going to be strong enough you're never going to be able to deal with all the things that you need to talk about and sometimes there are kind of things that happen that sort of bring things back to you and I was struggling this week with a bad back and I, I should say I'm not I'm not saying a bad back is the same as a separation, but the feeling of being not strong and helpless and needing to do things but not being able to, it really struck a chord with me this week as to the parallels between feeling like that and dealing with it because of a separation. And you know, I was really lucky. My back has sorted itself out and I'm feeling much better. Sorting out what arises from a separation can take an awful long time, not just to sort things out, but also to feel able and ready to be able to sort that out. So when I'm talking about the immediate aftermath of a separation, I am talking about that period where you don't know which way is up you don't feel strong, you may not want to get out of bed, you may find that you can't do anything without crying and you just don't know how you're going to get up in the morning, feed the children, go to work, all of the things that you need to do. The first thing I would say is that you need to identify what it is that you need to enable you to keep your head above water in the coming weeks, months. And, you know, I'm using this metaphor. When I say keep your head above water, I literally mean what do you need to enable you to tread water, to stay where you are and to keep your head above the surface. I'm not talking about swimming anywhere, getting to the side. It is just that. How can you keep your head above the water? And you know, I would divide this into a few areas. So one would be practical help. Do you need someone to just make some dinners for you that you can bring round and then that's just one less thing for you to have to deal with at the end of, you know, a difficult day or a difficult week or whatever it may be? Can it be someone to just have your children for you for a bit so that you can actually have those moments where you can fall apart and where you feel able to just be in that space rather than feeling that you've got to hold it together for them? And I think it is really hard with children in the initial stages because it's impossible for them not to know that you're upset. And I think 
there's sort of different things that get pulled together and muddied sometimes between children knowing you're upset and children then being made responsible to try and make you not upset and children being told that there is a blame for the reason that you're being upset and you know as long as I would I mean I would say as long as you're in the part of children knowing you're upset something has happened you're sad about it you know why would you not be sad about it this is a big thing personally I don't think there's anything wrong with that where I think the problems come and this is what I see in mediation is where children are forced to take on or feel that they have to take on a more adult role um, or where they feel that one parent is upset and the other parent has the blame for that. So very much practical help, what would help you? What can you ask friends or family for? Um, what emotional help do you need? What support do you need to help you move forward? Is it something like counselling? Is it that you need to visit your GP and you may need some form of medic medication just to help you cope for those first few weeks and months and you know there is no judgment attached to that there is the, the reason that this medication exists is because a great many number of people falter at times in their lives and every person has a limit of what they can cope with and it could be that divorce or separation makes you reach your limit it may be other support from family friends all of those kind of things it can also be useful, I think, to move on to the second point, which is to ask for help. And this is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. Um, and I'm probably one of those, I have to say. Asking for help. I am going through a difficult period in my life right now and I really might need some help from you saying that to trusted friends to family members so that they know that you might call upon them to ask for things and then you've set the groundwork for kind of where if you do need to ask for something they know about it it also means that help may then be volunteered you know people may then offer to help you look after children to um provide meals for you to be a listening ear and you can decide whether or not you need that help. Somebody may offer to do something and you may think, actually, do you know what? I'm OK. I, I don't need that help. But it's about letting people know that actually you're not as strong as you normally might be at this moment in time and that you might need some help. And I really believe that we all go through periods of time in our life where things are good and we're able to help other people and then things aren't so good and actually we need help from other people and there's a kind of balance to that that sometimes you give help and sometimes you get help and if you're a person who doesn't like to ask for help then I would say how do you feel when other people ask you for help because I know personally if someone asks me for help I'm always willing to give it I think you know it's nice to be asked for help to be trusted with something so I would certainly say to think about that. It's also important to skill yourself up with the best toolbox that you can have so that when you are ready to move forward, you've got places to go for information, people to get information from, and you have an idea of what you're going to need going forward. It doesn't mean that you have to do anything at this moment in time. But knowing where to find the information or where to go when you want to take those steps can be really helpful. And it can also help to take some of the stress away because you know that the services or the information is there and you know where to find it when you're ready to access it. So that might include things like talking to a, to a lawyer to get some advice on your situation. It could include finding out about family mediation services near you. It might include finding out about counselling or coaching or something that might help to support you during that period. It may also be that you need some financial help, in which case you might need someone that can do that. There's also quite a lot of information online now. Um, I would say be careful of some of the sources of information, but there are some really good places 
Resolutions website is one place and CAFCAS website about children and issues relating to children is useful. So there are places that you can go to enable you to find information. And if you know where that is, you've got it written down, you've got it stored in an email, you know you can access it. And the third thing is to think about when you're ready to move forward with things and to try the process of moving forward and making decisions. And there is absolutely no set time frame for that at all. It is about when you feel emotionally ready to make decisions about what happens next for, for you and for your children and you know what the next stages will be, what your new life will look like. Because as you deal with the separation, you have to come to terms with the fact that the life you thought you were going to have is not going to be that life. It is going to be something different. And part of moving forward with that is deciding when you are ready to talk about that and to make decisions about that. And it can really take some time. And I think sometimes there is a temptation to think, oh, this situation is so awful. I just want to decide what we're going to do, move forward with it, and then I can grieve and lick my wounds, you know, whatever the analogy is that resonates for you. And sometimes that works for people, that kind of like take a deep breath, run through and just get there. But I also think that where people try to talk about issues and find a resolution too soon, that can often put them into conflict and make things much more difficult. And if you start to try and resolve things and you find that's happening, sometimes you can just need to both have a bit of time and space so that you can then come back to talking about things when you feel more emotionally strong. And that can just be a game changer in terms of sorting things out, that then things move forward much more easily and you don't feel like you're you know, battling through something or wading through treacle. I seem to be using a lot of metaphors this morning. Looking then at longer term help and, you know, what it is that you need to do in the longer term. I think the biggest thing with this and something that I talk about a lot is visualisation. When you separate from someone, you are going to be having a different life to the one you thought you were going to have. And that thought can be crushing, depressing you know, a whole manner of adjectives. But you can also, when you get to the right point, start to visualise what that new life might look like and start to see some green shoots of how it could be okay. And the sorts of things that I start with are things like what's important to you? What actually isn't important to you? And sometimes people are surprised, actually, by what really turns out to be important to them and what isn't that important. Sometimes the things that are not that important, the things that they thought might be very important. There's also, I think, a big fear for parents of younger children about what's going to happen when the children are with the other parents and how they're going to deal with that. Is it going to be lonely? Is it going to be empty? And often it can help to think about things that you have wanted to do, but maybe not been able to because the children were with you, you know, for whatever reason. So it can help to make a plan as to what might you do when the children are with the other parent. Is there a, a hobby that you've always wanted to take up? Is there a friend that you haven't seen for ages that you've been meaning to catch up with but haven't been able to? Is there something that you've always wanted to do but not had the time to do that you can now do longer or for greater periods of time? Just start that thought process about what it could look like. How could it be good? And even if you can't do the things that you want to straight away, can you make a plan so that you might be able to do them in, you know, six months time, a year's time, whatever it needs to be? Are there things that you've always shelved in your life that 
you maybe don't have to shelve anymore. I wrote, I did a video a while back about um, thinking about visualising your new life and what it might look like. And it might be something simple as your ex-partner always wanted to tea in cups and saucers and actually now you're going to have mugs in your house. Tea will be in mugs. And sometimes it is just small things, but it's about seeing those shoots of a new life and starting to visualise what that might look like. And that can help you to see that maybe it won't be completely awful, that there could be good elements in it. But it also helps with taking ownership of your new life. And I really believe that that is an important part of sorting things out and moving forward. That whole, right, this is my new life. What's it going to look like? And from people that I see in mediation, I think that's quite a significant change when people feel you know, anxious, depressed, and they're in that really difficult stage, that's when they'll almost say, I'll accept anything. What are you prepared to give me? I'll just do what I have to do. And there's a real different gear or like a button switch that can start to happen when you start to think about, actually, what do I want it to be like? What do I want in my new life? What do I not want in my new life? All those kind of things. The second thing is to think about what more longer term help you might benefit from. And that could, again, be practical help. Um, For example, you may need more childcare if you're going to work more hours. And remember that childcare doesn't have to be paid for childcare. It can be thinking about, okay. What do I need in terms of childcare? Who might be able to help me? What could I do for that person in return? Those kind of practical elements. There can also be looking at more emotional support. And again, that could be something like counselling or um, support in that way. Or it could be attending a support group for separated or divorced people or parents. Or it could be a regular catch up coffee or a drink with a trusted friend knowing that you're always going to have that and you've got someone to talk to about things. If you are concerned about money, then getting some long term financial advice from a professional can also be helpful so that you can really feel that you are using whatever money you have in the most effective way to ensure that you're getting the greatest benefit. And lastly, I would say remember to move at your own pace. There is absolutely no right idea of how long it takes someone to get over a relationship breakdown. Everyone has a friend who feels fine within a you know few months, few weeks. People may know someone that still feels they haven't quite got there after three years. There is no wrong way. There is only your way. And you have to listen to how you're feeling and what's going on with you and look at what help and support you might need to enable you to move forward. And, you know, I really believe there is no set time frame of, well, do you know what? In this period of time, you're just going to be feeling better and it's going to be like a switch has flicked. So those are the things that I've been thinking about with life after separation. You can find the blog on our website www.lkwfamilymediation.co.uk forward slash blog sorry forward slash blog and a forward slash at the end as well and that will take you to the latest blogs. If you want to get involved with our Facebook lives then please like our Facebook page at LKW Family Mediation and you'll then see when they're coming up and be able to get details so that you can join and ask questions. And please help us to spread the word. We want to be able to do this so that I, as a mediator, can talk to as many people as possible. I really believe that it is possible to have a dignified and constructive separation. And I want to share what I've learned with people to enable them to manage their separation in the most, you know, the best possible way that they can. So we'll see you for the next Facebook Live. Thanks very much.